I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Dante Rebellion Sword was highly requested by you guys. So much so, that we decided to make it out of Damascus to make it as badass as possible. In this build, we're going to be using Bandsaw Blade and Banning Strap to form our Damascus Blade. Bandsaw Blade is 15 and 20, the Banning Strap is 1075. To prevent flaws in the blade, Matt removes the bimetal teeth from the saw blades. I clean each strip of metal to ensure a great weld. You want to be careful and just scuff the surface so you're not removing too much of your material, otherwise you're not going to have enough to make a sword. I will clean off this whole pile and then we're going to stack them alternating. We're going to stack a 44 layer billet and then we're going to forge weld it. After MIG welding our billet together, we're now ready to go to the forge. We sprayed the billet with WD-40 oil and put borax on it. Hot WD-40 oil dissolves the borax and drags it in between the layers. Borax takes off the oxidation and exposes the bare metal. That way, the metal can forge between the layers. Billy and I go to the screw press for our initial weld. After using the screw press for our first two heats, ensuring a great weld, I move to the power hammer and continue to draw it out. After forging our billet to length, I'm just going to cut it off the handle so we can cut it into six equal parts and restack it. I sand the scale off before I restack to ensure the best weld. Using a chop saw, I cut my six equal parts of the billet. After tack welding my restack, I prepare to go to the forge. After using a cross peen hammer to do my initial weld, Billy and I move to the screw press. When working larger or wider material, it's easier to have large dies on a power hammer. Matt changes over to the Beaudry number 8 250 pound hammer to work this billet. I now move to the Iron Kiss hammer that has crisp flat dies to pinch and draw out the tang. Now that I got my tang and my shoulder area defined, I'm going to go diagonally on the drawing die and uh, pull my shoulder width out. I need to gain a little width. Alright, here you can see we have a very long way to go before it's actually a sword blade, but I'm going to remove some material creating a, what's called a ladder pattern. Grinding some diagonal grooves in the blade allows the underlying layers to show, making a more beautiful and elaborate pattern. I now hand the blade off to Ilya to forge in the wasping on the blade. Right now, I'm increasing the length of the blade by drawing the material from the shoulder of the blade all the way up to the point. So here Ilya is just working slightly on the shoulder, swamping to it about the middle of the blade on the uh, drawing dies. Now using the flat dies to just re-flatten everything, to keep everything nice, straight, and true. Once again, he's being very gentle on the hammer to ensure that we don't get any folding or delamination. When forging on the edge, you're always risking it slightly. I hold the blade at a steep angle for Ilya to hand forge the tip. Using a hot cut tool and a power hammer, Ilya and I separate the blade from the handle and draw out the tang.
place it in the forge and start bringing up the temperature. And then we're gonna shut the forge off so that we can get a very even heat on this. We turn the forge off because we have a lot of residual heat. This is hard fire brick and cast refractory. It holds a lot of temperature. The sword will start to disappear in the forge when we're looking as it reaches the same temperature that we have inside of the forge. That way we know we've got a good even soak over the whole piece. It's a really critical phase that you have to play around with the straightness. And the blade's around 600 degrees. Yeah, so now we'll be ready for the hot oil bath temper. Even though it's still fairly hot, it's moved out of what we call the super plastic stage, which is when we can straighten it. It'll become very hard and almost glassy, and so we're gonna have to temper it so that we don't break it. It's very important. Lauren alters the wax skull for the Dante's Rebellion sword. So I have this um, pre-existing skull, and we're gonna alter it to make it more demon-like. I'm gonna rework his teeth, make sure they're strong, because of being an old wax, the wax is a little brittle, so it needs to be reinforced. I'm going to have to reconstruct the top of his head with this sheet wax. Then I'm gonna start working on the bone arms, and then the rib cage we're gonna open up so we see the Damascus steel blade come through, and I'm going to make the crown part. The original piece was a solid piece, and we're making it into three pieces. So it's pretty much a good day's work here. To save Lauren a lot of sculpting time, I removed some material from the wax bones using a sander. Lauren uses multiple flasks to invest the sections of the Devil May Cry sword. For the skull on this sword, we use a 5 inch diameter flask. It has about 8 pounds of investment in it. The investment is a plaster mix with some other stuff mixed in to make it hard and it gets cooked in a kiln afterwards and what it becomes is our mold for pouring the molten metal in. Once it falls to 900 degrees, I take the flask out to the water and quench it to reveal the skull. Yay, we have teeth, yeah. we have teeth. We follow the same procedure two more times to cast the rib cage and the bones. Now that we have all of our hilt parts cast, it's time to clean them up on the wire wheel. So after tempering, I was able to go in, do a lot more grinding on this blade. I did my central ridge. It's a lot lighter now. So at this stage, it doesn't look a whole lot different than just a regular mono steel blade, but it's 269 layers of Damascus steel. So by the time I get this up through the grits and get it etched, it's gonna be immaculate. I start at 24 grit and end up around 400 before the scotch break. After etching the blade in ferric chloride, you can see we don't have a whole lot of contrast. It's very dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the buffer and brighten up all our lines. TIG welding all the bronze parts together left some color and a little bit of cleanup to be done. I go to the buffer to polish it all out. In the game, the sword has a very heavy all iron handle. I'm going to be using iron wood to reduce the weight. After using the drill press to drill my central hole, I burn the handle onto the tank. All right, we got our handle slotted. I'm just gonna go ahead and grind it. Uh, I'm not gonna do an oval to round like I do on most of my sword handles. In the game, it's got a real angular, aggressive handle. So I'm really gonna just put some big scoops here, knock the corners off, taper this in to fit our pommel, and we'll be good to go. We now have our elaborately beautiful Damascus blade polished and etched. Our guard constructed and polished out. Our handle sanded to shape, and our pommel ready to go. We're almost ready to slay ourselves some demons.
click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next. Special thanks to our friends at Zombie Go Boom.